The last of the Sisters of Battle releases is here. <laughs> Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and we're going to unbox and build uh, the new Sisters of Battle Adeptus Sortos Castigator Battle Tank. Now, this is the, I don't even know what wave release this is for the Sisters of Battle, but uh, it's, it's basically towards the tail end, if not the last. And I don't know how the interest level is on this tank. I haven't seen a lot of people even proxying it to play in their armies, but it's kind of a neat look because it's you know, basically a reinvention of the Space Marine Predator, although obviously not for Space Marines in general. Its price point currently is $80 US, and of course you can always get your hobbies for less from Dicehead.com or Amazon, or of course your local game store. So let's, uh, let's get it out of the box and uh, kind of see what's going on with it. I haven't had a chance to quite look at the sprues yet, but I suspect one of these is gonna be reused. So let's jump in here. So this obviously is a new sprue. This is gonna be the uh, tank, the actual tank uh, upgrades set itself. Interesting, some brazers right there. And then this is what I was wondering about. So this sprue right here, and of course there's an instruction manual and some decals. This sprue, let's take a look, 20, 2020 okay yeah so this is the emulator sprue which i thought was pretty interesting that they reused it um obviously it has some innovations over the predator which came out in like 2003 you know it's got the treads actually locked into it and the front has a lot going on with it the um hatches are separate so in theory you know when it came to the emulator you could also use it as a rhino but i think if i recall correctly the emulator and i'm going to go check this on gw site had also had the top top tank uh, collar or um, the hatch uh, actually locked in where it couldn't be removed from the chassis. Okay, well, I was half right. <laughs> it had uh, it has a completely different system at the top for the um, the, the emulator turret, and um, obviously the Exorcist is even even more different. So this would have been the first opportunity to actually make a Rhino and also the tank, similar to what you can do with the Space Marine Predator, out of this kit. Which GW took the opportunity to actually make this piece, which we know to be separate on the Space Marine Rhino, actually make it part of the kit. So you can't make it modular. You can't use it as a rhino. If you want a Sisters of Battle rhino, you have to buy that separately. So it is what it is. In 2021, it's not the GW of 2003, of course. So checking the instructions, at least, this is going to pretty much go together like the emulator. Um, you don't have to mess around with the treads, which is really nice because the treads can be a bit of a pain sometimes in years past and it's got this cool hatch on the back that doesn't look to flip down it looks like it actually glues in that's kind of interesting only the, the only trends you're gonna have to mess with are the ones that actually go around the back which looks pretty simple to be quite honest the front's gonna have again the point defense heavy bolter you can't switch that out and everything here is gonna go together very much similar to the emulator, which we already showed you about a year or so ago. And then you can put the side, um, this new coupler piece here to actually make it so you can load. I guess they, it's a hatch that they lean out and they actually put the ammo hopper up into uh, the heavy bolter on the side here for the Predator. So this is where there are, the, <laughs> excuse me, for the Cascade. So this is where the design starts to differ. And then you've got these two different uh, brazer tops that you can put on here depending on which one you like. It looks like there's the kind of the open face one. And I thought there was one with just the coals themselves. I swear I saw two different sets of those. Maybe, um, maybe I am hallucinating. Maybe it is time to take a break. I don't know. Uh, so over here, this is going to lock in. Now, what I was going to say was we could have made this modular. We could have made a Rhino because they give you the extra hatch bits from the emulator, but unfortunately that's impossible because they literally went out of their way to not make this its own part. So if they had, we could have swapped that out. But I, you know, obviously GW wants to sell kits and they weren't gonna allow us to do what we did in the years past. Also, this doesn't come with two different weapons over here. So we don't have to worry about magnetizing this. It doesn't come with a heavy flamer. It doesn't come with anything else to try to future proof. But we are gonna try to figure out how to magnetize this here, which is the Castigator Battle Cannon and the Castigator auto, Twin Auto Cannons, I guess. Um, and it's really interesting how this goes together. They actually give you two full fronts that it locks into, and then the only thing that the, the kit has common is these little hinge bits here, and then the turret itself. 
So if we could figure out a way to magnetize this uh, somehow, then maybe perhaps we can slide this in. You're probably gonna wanna clip these off and we'll take a look at that here in a second. And then it's got all this ornamentation to make it all Baroque and dope looking and put all that stuff on there. Me personally, I like to keep it as clean as possible so I don't have to paint all these things. So I'm not sure I'd put these on the front or all these little things. But if, you know, making these big centerpiece models, obviously I feel like a lot of Sisters players after painting and assembling the Exorcist, painting and assembling emulators, you might be at the end of your rope when it comes to painting um, all the sisters detail. So maybe you want to leave some of these off. Perfectly understandable. Won't hold that against you whatsoever. And then there's the IKEA state style data sheet. But of course, I don't feel like this is going to see a lot of play quite yet. But hey, the way we're receiving supplemental updates and white dwarf updates, it's better to magnetize your stuff to keep it future proof so that, you know, you can go always go back and change up your builds. So here's a quick look at the sprues. We've already kind of showed you these really quick. Uh, there are the halves here that, for the top brazers. And then on the emulator set, there are um, bases for this to go on. So you can have flames coming out or you can have hot coals at the, at the top there, which I thought was pretty neat. Now the detail on all this stuff is pretty, you know, exemplary, like you, it's GW, like they're always all about having all their iconography and all their super details so you can always tell something is uh, always about the grim dark i think but uh, you know when it comes to everything else uh, there is a lot of detail on here already you're not going to be able to get rid of um so like i said maybe you don't want to glue those other parts on and then there's the flaming ones uh, that you may or may not want to use kind of depending but everything's going to lock into this no matter what you do so you're going to have to at least use this half here and then this half over here is going to lock in so it's all very very well done let's see what we can do as far as uh, magnetizing this well believe it or not this is probably actually the easiest magnetization build i've ever done <laughs> uh, which is really cool so the kit itself is pretty dope um it's pretty tight you can tell they're doing these things on the, the computers these days well besides the hats that i didn't glue in there and now you know my secret uh, everything is super tight like nothing is glued down for the most part it's all locked in so you can rotate the turret you can rotate the heavy bolter in the front it's very very easy to do and i'm just going to pull this out and we're just going to have to deal with that um, what I like about the design here is the, the old Predator was very um, not well done, I think. And this this is well done, like it moves. I think this is nice and sturdy. A lot of people, there's broke right here from the old plastic design. Um, and you ended up having to either pin it or uh, add magnets as well. But this seems to uh, have solved that problem. You can definitely swivel it. And like I said, move the, you know, move the point defense weapon itself up in, or the secondary weapon up and down which is really really cool i think you know so being able to play with all your your parts and everything on the tabletop is always cool and then this right here definitely rotates now here's the secret to magnetizing this it's very very simple believe it or not and they both lock in and they both can tilt up and do the all the cool actions you can make all the machine gun noises so the way i did this was we didn't use that little hinge piece at all. We just took uh, two sets of one, what is this? This is a quarter by 1 16th. Sorry, I don't know the metric because I'm a stupid American, but you can definitely look, look it up for sure. So one quarter by 1 16th. And Magnet Baron sells packs of these magnets. That's where I got them from. And I'll put a link uh, to in here somewhere so that you can um, uh, get them get those packs from him if you live here in the states they're super affordable and we always like helping out uh, fellow hobbyists in their companies here in the studio and then all i did was take another set of the very same magnet and just lock it in uh right there uh so super easy just glued it all down and slid it in and make sure the polarizations match i didn't glue this down but you could because i wanted to show you where we actually put the magnets uh, to use right there so and you know or maybe you want to keep it open so that if the magnets ever fail or pop out you could definitely um, get in there and replace them because it, the tolerances are so tight because they're doing everything on computers now that it's not going to fall off or anything like that and maybe you want to even paint it like the bottom do like a two-tone like you'd have black and you could have white up top or something like that or like a bone um, and have this a completely different color depending on which of the uh, you know sisters militant uh, chapter arm I forget what they're called ordos houses I don't even know anymore all the terms are ubiquitous and they all kind of blend together in my mind but you know what I'm talking about like the order of the bloody rose and all those things you could uh, do some really cool paint effects and things like that you could also paint this separately 
this cowl and things, you know, if you wanted to do that, maybe even the back hatch, but you do have to glue that in. Uh, if you build an emulator, you already know pretty much all of this part right here and how this all goes together. So you can kind of come up with your, uh, your own strategy there. But yeah, super easy build, uh, goes together very well and obviously very easy to magnetize too. So thank you very much for watching our unbox and build of the new Sisters of Battle Castigator uh, main battle tank for them. Um, hopefully, you know, in the future we see more of these hit the tabletops because tanks are always cool, but it seems like Sisters are more of a kind of an all infantry force right now, which is kind of unfortunate because this is, you know, if you're a fan of the Predator from back in the day for the Space Marines, uh, this one will definitely probably uh, tickle your hobby pickle there. So uh, thank you very much for watching and make sure to always check out, you know, all, all those other uh, great companies that you can order your stuff from like dicehead.com, your local game store, or of course, um, Amazon as well out there. Oh, and don't forget to uh, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos. If you liked that video feature, consider supporting us over at patreon.com and get back in the mail each month a miniature crate full of some of the stuff we review here as well as some of the top 3D artist designs out there too to help support what they're doing. Plus, discount coupon codes from some of those same manufacturers. They're yours to keep whether you cancel or stay on. Just It's totally up to you. Obviously, we want to keep you as happy as possible. So check it out over at patreon.com forward slash spiky